you are in Jesus Christ, then your life is hidden with Christ together in God. And the Bible says that He sealed us. That we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So how close is your Jesus? How did Jesus put it? I in you and you in me. How close is your Jesus? Just beneath your flesh and bones and everything that you call you, that is where Jesus lives. He lives in you and you live in Him and it is forever because He sealed the envelope. He did the work and now you wake up and benefit from a secure place, a safe place. People wonder if they're cursed, if God has cursed them in some way, if God is frowning upon them, if God is disgusted with them. But this morning, the message of the cross is that Jesus Christ put all of His disgust on that cross, that God the Father took all of His frustration and put it on His Son. He became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. Is God disgusted with His own righteousness? Is God frustrated with His own righteousness? No, you are that righteousness. That is what it means to be born of the resurrection, to be born again, to be infused with the life of Christ. He birthed you into a new creation, and you are His righteousness. You are in Christ. You are 100% dead to sin right now. That is why the Scripture never tells us to wait and beg and hope and plead for victory over sin. It says, count yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. That came to us by God's grace. So we have a feeble and weak and pathetic view of God's grace if we think we should water down God's grace or balance it with another message so that we might find victory over sin some other way. Perhaps if we balance grace and truth, we'll find victory. Perhaps if we balance grace and law, we'll find victory. Nonsense. The truth will always set us free. And here it is. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is enough. By God's grace, we have been gifted with victory over sin. It's as if we're, you know, saying that it's our job to hold on tight enough. If we could just hold on long enough and tight enough, then we will be saved. And this message of God's grace comes in and it causes us to lose our grip. Well, that's a fallacy. First, we're not hanging on for dear life. God is hanging on to us. We're not hanging on trying to make an effort to stay saved. God is the one who has us. He's got us. He is able to save us completely. It is by His doing that we are in Christ Jesus. So we're told that all of the weight of maintaining our salvation... All of the weight is on God. It's not on us. We are anchored by two unchangeable things, God and God, a God of grace on one side and a God of grace on the other side. It is not about your ability to continue. It is not about your grip and the strength of it. That was an old covenant problem solved by the new. Do you recognize that? Let's review the old covenant problem. God says, and I turned away from them, says the Lord, because they did not remain faithful. What does that mean? They didn't continue and they didn't hold fast. So you see, the old covenant problem was their ability to continue and their ability to hold fast. The new covenant solution is that Jesus Christ lives within you and He will never deny Himself.
Oh man, eternal security, yo. Huh? Eternal security is always under attack. So here's what's going on, yo. Let's read this article from Michael Jeshurun. God says, salvation is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that show it mercy. Romans 9, 16. The Armenian says, sorry, salvation is of him that will it of his own free will and of him that run it with his determination. You see a pattern? Keep reading. God says, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. John 6, 44. Armenian says, sorry, that's your interpretation. A man, though fallen and depraved, can come to Christ if he so wills. Ah, imagine that. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10, 28. Armenian says, sorry, the child of God can and will perish if he doesn't behave. And though no man may be able to pluck them out of God's hand, the child of God can himself or herself jump out and run away. You get what I'm saying right now? So this right here is some foolishness. Or they say, if you do not obey, then, 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 then you're going to lose that salvation. If you do not obey. That's the word that just gets me. You must be obedient. Are you obedient? When's the last time you was obedient? I could tell you not today. Anyway, let's just kind of run down here. Finally, God says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them. Okay? To do them good. But I will not, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Armenians say, Sorry, God will depart from his covenant children if they don't behave. And his children too will depart from him if they aren't faithful. Ultimately, salvation according to the meaning is not of the Lord. According to Jonah 2 9. It is of the Lord and man. Salvation is not by grace alone, but by grace plus works. According to this works-based people. In the final analysis, man had whereof to glory, <laughs> for without his cooperation, Christ died in vain. Imagine that, you know? So, so you have to do something in order for your salvation to be maintained, according to these false teachers out there, okay? Now, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You hear that? When you're working, you're working off a debt. But to him that worketh not, but believe it on him. Who is him? Jesus, that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Okay? So, guys, man, please stop listening to these people. These people are using fear-mongering, and, and nobody saved by fear-mongering. Period. It is for by grace are we saved. True faith. It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 8 9. It is very clear, okay? Anyone that speaks otherwise is a liar. Do not listen to them. This is why eternal security is solid. Jesus did not die for you partially, he died for you once and for all, as in eternal. This is why John 3 16, if you read it, it tells you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. Eternal means eternal. Okay? If you do not understand English and you want to sit here trying to, you know, re redefine what eternal means, then by all means, man, take that freaking language and go burn it somewhere else, yo. But stop lying to people. Eternal means eternal. And free means free. And a gift is a gift. I can't give you a gift and put stipulations, okay? Imagine walking to a homeless person and you give me a bottle of water and you tell them, hey, you cannot open this bottle of water until four hours later. Or better yet, you can only sip like one sip every hour, but you cannot sip anything else after that. That is, you're not giving that a gift if, if there's a stipulation involved with that. Do you see what I'm saying? You got to think smarter, people. Use your head. Use your brains that God gave you. Because uh, I think a lot of y'all have thrown your brains outside, you know what I'm saying, and locked it away somewhere. 
and Satan is the one speaking to you. The Bible tells us that Satan himself will, will come to you like an angel of light. He's not going to come in there saying, hey, I'm Satan. Don't, don't believe God. No. Remember, he was quoting scriptures to Jesus also, Psalms to be exact, because I read that in Psalms. But he was mixing truth with lie. That's what deception is, okay? Many of you are deceived that's into this freaking work-based salvation because there's truth in it, and then it's mixed with lies. That's what Satan does best. Divide and conquer, okay? And look at you fighting Anyone that's, that's trying to share the truth with you about the grace of God, that it is eternal. Salvation is eternal. You cannot lose something that you never earned. It was given to you for free. Out of God's own mercy, out of his own grace, not because you deserve it. You, you deserve nothing. You deserve hell. All of us do. But he made a way out for us and gave it freely to all those who believe. Now, and you can reject it, then you're not saved. I'm sorry. I don't care how much obedient you think you are, you are not saved if it is not Christ alone. Simple as that. Peace. Let's keep on going.